Hello. Today I flew around the Thomas Eddy area of the Snohomish River. This part of the river is about three miles south-southeast of Harvey Field Airport and about five miles west of El Borland Park in Monroe, Washington. Much more than at El Borland Park, this flight I added quite a few challenges. The first challenge was a limited amount of visibility because the only viable launch point on public land was surrounded by trees. The vast majority of the flight ended up being in, in a fairly limited cone of visibility from that location. I did, however, fly to the left and the right of the ground field of view somewhat over the river itself. I also pushed the boundaries of how far I'd flown, getting out to about 850 meters, or 0.53 miles, from the launch position. As soon as the control signal was lost for a second, that is where I stopped my advance toward the southwest. I also tested the limits of the batteries. On my first battery, I touched down four seconds before it would have executed the return to home function. Now this area looks pretty nice from the ground, but it's not what I would really call super scenic. It definitely looks good from the air though. The color gradations in the water and the sandbars are what attracted me to this location on Google Earth. Very little of this part of the river is accessible publicly, so I had to settle for this state-owned river access on Short School Road. I was here the evening before to take a flight, but it was flooded with teenagers, apparently having some sort of end of school party, so I returned home. When I came back this morning, there was unfortunately a residual of litter from the kids. Luckily, a quadcopter can go places that they couldn't and could capture nature's beauty and also some of the fine agricultural land in this vicinity. <laughs> In addition to testing the limits of the battery and the, the RC range, I also tried some maneuvers like yawing, climbing, and moving laterally simultaneously. Until the POI function is released, I will continue to attempt to do similar maneuvers manually, with varying degrees of success, I'm sure. As we pan around, we can see Lord Hill Regional Park coming into view. That's, a, that's that large, heavily wooded hill to the east. And as we continue, once we get past the, the hill, we will get a glimpse of Mount Rainier on the horizon. One thing I have discovered about the Phantom 3 camera is that if left in auto exposure, it will want to overexpose trees. 
So if the image is full of big dark green objects, it tends to brighten up way too much. So for most of this video, I ran at a fixed manual exposure of a 100 ISO equivalent and a 1 1600th shutter speed. It must also be noted that the Phantom 3 camera is fixed aperture at 2.8 and has a fixed zoom with about a 92 degree field of view. Here one can see how wooded the launch site was. Not something to use FPV on, this was visual all the way. I had a tarp laid down because the dirt is very fine here and the rotors would really kick up a lot of dust here without it. Well, I hope you enjoyed our aerial visit to Thomas Eddy on the Snohomish River. If you like what you saw, please hit like and by all means subscribe. Later.